Dateline, uh, 1964, almost 97 years old. Everybody's looking for him, but he's now Cappadocian wise. He goes down. He goes down in one of those uh, underground uh, villages called Kamakli, yeah. And he goes down as far as he can. He's got to get out of here forever. He goes down to the seventh level. You know, they, they took that out just for him, huh? Used to be just two tiers. Yeah, down to seven now. And uh, he never left. He never came up. Oh, they had ventilation shafts, so he could breathe air, but he never came up to the earth again, ever. No. Uh, uh, to die there, if he had to, in peace, yeah. Well, he had a few uh, disciples and hardcore hashish connoisseurs, mostly Afghanis from Balkh, mostly cousins, grand cousins, <clears throat> to attend to him and... Um, help him, feed him, while hanging on his every word, and he would make four grams. He would press four grams only. I mean, his hands are tired, old, withered, still had ten fingers, and to get a smoke with mm -hmm, him, a primo, non rotting mm-hmm, yeah. Well, yeah, he was, you know, he was a malung. He was a yogi. He keeps those habits. He only eats uh, unleavened uh, naan and yogurt and water. That's it. I mean, that's, it's worked 97 years for the guy. And uh, he's attended by uh, pale troglodytes and fez heads. Faithful inner circle. Yeah. And uh, it was on a moonless September night last year. Sphinx carries on. Uh, lightning storm. Or you can just imagine it. Huh? Big lightning storm up above on the top. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Um, Omar prepared for me exclusively. An amber chillum. Yeah, he had a solid amber chillum etched with the design of his hashish preservation clan of uh, Pakistanis. You had to be one to know that this was the code. Like a coat of arms oh. on a chillum, on a pipe. So you have a smokier coat. Yeah, just for me. Huh? Yeah, and uh, he, he, he put his, uh, well, it was uh, so scarred up from all the previous biting, arm around me, and he spoke to me and whispered to me, well, at this dramatic moment, uh, uh, Sphinx, the master storyteller, he bursts into tears so passionately that his eyes spray teardrops all over Pasha and Safo. Freaks them out completely. What's wrong? Safo wonders. Man, are you okay? says Pasha. What did Omar enlighten you with? Uh, sobbing. Mystic, theatrical saga. Oh, uh, uh, well, Sphinx, like a cobra, uh, oh, uh, rising uh, over Cleopatra. That ass, huh? Yeah, he, she, that ass bit her ass and wasted her. At least she should get bit by me. Hooded cobra. I got a hood snake on on my head. And he slowly, yeah, just like a, a pharaoh, a freaked out pharaoh. He just, what? 
he walks away. He's leaving turf prints in the turf. And around the turret, the four-story turret with a little half alcove cave in it, and disappears. Probably going back to the rolls. Oh, oh, the rolls, yeah, it's still hunched patiently like a Hercules beetle obedience, you know, by the road. And uh, mm -hmm. So, Pasha and Safo, oh, completely alone. No man, woman, beast, especially camels around. Silent, eerie, romantic. Oh, uh, well, um, Pasha, hmm, it's just kind of cool. It's lying back against the tuff, tuff ledge, and uh, what? Safo slinks over towards him like a like a sex-starved panther. And, I mean, she's an Amazon, huh? Whatever she wants to do, she does. Especially in the boxing ring. Uh, she just, like, grabs uh, Pasha's blue jeans and pulls him down to his knees. And, oh, look at that. Oh, that young, frisky, frustrated cock. Oh, she goes down on him. Oh, yeah, mm, the startled teenager. Oh, coaxing, uh, you know his tender testicles, and uh, she, all he can see is her lovely avant dress. He's lying on his back. He's just like got this beautiful hair tent over him. And uh, yeah, like a uh, suckling wolf cub that can't get enough milk from mommy wolf. She, Delivering to the young man. <laughs> oh, the release. Pent up sexual juice spurting. Oh, everywhere. I mean, uh, Savo gets a whole new facial on that. Uh, ecstatic, out flooding, fountaining. Uh, rare, pure pleasure. Look, Safo, we're talking dedicated dyke. This could be a once-in-a-lifetime uh, blowjob gift for Pasha. Consider all of that, you know. How, how compassionate. Totally uncharacteristic. Uh, if I were mystical enough, I could probably connect some past lifetimes together, and this was a reward for something that Pasha had, you know, with her later, before. But I'm not that smart, so you just have to go with the surface story from now on. But that's pretty, pretty uh, entertaining. Huh? Oh, that's sexy, huh? Oh, oh, that's a blowjob in the desert, huh? Oof. <laughs> 